Mm. Winston. What's up, Tyler? You doing all right? How you, how you doing, man? I'm good. I am in a Panera Bread. We should have oh, yeah. one of those one day. Um, <laughs> I don't think yeah, my internet sure. is great, but um, we're going to give it a go here. I'm out awesome. traveling. Uh, doing site selection for a client, looking at some properties, and time got away from me, and so I had to rush in here. So hopefully we can make this work. All good, man. You're in a you're in a QSR. We're both underrated QSR. Everything everything lines up. It just makes sense, right? I'll tell you one thing. Um, you don't really want to be riding around at five o'clock traffic doing site selection. You just it's just not very productive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I kind of got stuck in that, but it's all good. Well, hey, let's get started. Um, Todd, what do we have on the uh, on the hook today? Yeah, we're looking at so, and this is pretty close to where you live. Uh, we're looking at a Dutch Bros mm -hmm. Coffee in Columbia, Tennessee. Um, maybe you want to talk a little bit about Columbia. It's right next door to your to your beautiful home, your beautiful city of Nashville. Um, fast growing, fast growing area. Um, you want to, you want to say anything about Columbia? Yeah. So Columbia is a great town. Uh, it's neighbor Spring Hill, um, yeah. under road, I think we under road, um, something in Spring Hill, I believe it was a child care, yeah. um, yeah. uh, Montessori school or something like that, uh, there. So, you know, it's right next to, uh, Spring Hill and, and Columbia are right next to each other. Spring Hill is split between a, uh, I can't remember the counties. I know one part of it's Williamson County, um, but Columbia is a little bit further south. Um, great community, blowing up like crazy. Um, you know, a lot of good growth. A, a really quaint and cool, like little downtown area. Um, they've really done a good job revitalizing their downtown area in Columbia. I really like it. Um, we've got a, a project going on there currently uh, in Columbia. Um, the city's been a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie, probably not my favorite. It's kind of odd that we're talking about Columbia right now, but overall, I do, I do love that town. Um, it's small though. Um, it is a small but rapidly growing area, south of Nashville, about an hour. I would say it's about an hour south of Nashville. Really? Is that far? I thought it was, I thought it was closer. An hour south of Nashville. Yeah, I think it's about an hour. Cool. Uh, but yeah, like you said, fast growing area. Um, so we're underwriting this week. A Dutch Bros coffee in Columbia. Screen. We're talking. So, uh, first talking about, and then a little bit further south, you have Columbia. Um, in the heart of Columbia you have a couple of main retail strips. This Dutch Bros Coffee is right on one of them. Um, you, you pretty much have this road here coming down, which I believe is Carmack, yeah, the US 31. And then you have uh, this road going east to west, right? So this is um, where the Dutch Bros Coffee is sitting. It's right in the middle of a retail strip. You can see, you know, who are the neighbors, um, everyone you everyone you expect in there, at Ruby Tuesdays, uh, Firehouse Subs, Applebee's, et cetera. You've got a TJ Maxx here. You've got a shopping mall, Walmart over here. Um, this is about as retail as it gets, right? And this uh, um, Dutch Bros Coffee. So I don't know. Do you do you have you been to a? Do you know Fat Moe's, Winston? This is an old Fat Moe's. They're they're turning it over into a Dutch Bros Coffee. I am uh, I am familiar with Fat Moe's, and I'm going to be honest, Tyler. I've can. I'll talk to you offline about <laughs> this, um, this, this here. So, yes, Fat Moe's is like a local Nashville chain from like 30 years ago uh, doing burgers. But, um, and I think their whole thing is like, instead of like cooking their burgers on the grill, they fry the burgers. Um, so the, you got kind of like an underground cult following of Fat Moe's, but they're, they're dying out. Um, it's not a brand that's growing. They dying Most of their because buildings all, of their, are in... all of their patrons have died of heart attacks from their fried burgers. <laughs> I, maybe. I don't know. But hey, I'll t there's one right next to my house. 
and uh, about 5 30 6 30 at night packed slam right but um good stuff but their, their buildings are, are kind of dilapidated and and not not very so uh but yeah i know fat most they, they i think at one point had like 14 locations around mm-hmm. nashville but now i think maybe they have like seven awesome um so this like we said you know super retail area for this essentially brand new or or a renovated building with a brand new lease right so dutch bros coffee you know, we can just pop open some details here. Tiny little building, uh, less than a thousand square feet, but yeah. Hey, let's talk about uh, Dutch Bros real quick. Uh, for those that may not be familiar with who Dutch Bros Coffee sure. is, is that cool? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, it's a free traded company. This is a credit tenant. It's important to note that a lot of times that we, we underwrite non-credit tenants, right? Um, this is traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, you know, it's got about 670 stores, originally founded in Oregon. I mean, they're growing like crazy. I read something not too long ago that said they wanted to have, I think it was a total of 5,000 stores in the in the U.S. and abroad. I mean, they, you know, don't, please check me on that. But um, I do believe they have a very aggressive uh, growth strategy. They do about 500 million a year uh, in annual sales revenue. And I'm pretty positive they do not franchise. I think all of these are corporate owned. Oh, do you know, Tyler? Uh, is this a, uh, yeah, this is a corporate? I, this is this is a corporate backed. I don't know if they. You might be right there. I don't. I don't know if they do franchise at all. But this and one in particular is is a uh, corporate backed. Yeah, and so I'm pretty sure they don't. They do not franchise. Um, these are all company owned, and so. Really interesting concept. They're throwing them up everywhere, uh, including all around Middle Tennessee. So, um, really interesting. Um, see Do you like here. it better than Starbucks? You know, I don't know. Um, I go to Star- Starbucks more because Starbucks is more convenient. I'm going to have out of for any coffee place whatsoever. You know, but um, I can't answer that. That's a great question, but I, I can't answer it. I've probably been to Dutch Bros a few times, but I probably predominantly go to Starbucks. I get those little egg, like the, the egg white things. I forget what they're called. Um, <laughs> but those those that know, you know, they're delicious. Um, and then I get like a, you know, just a black coffee from, from Starbucks. So I don't think nice. Dutch Bros has the uh, little egg bombs. But anyway. Egg thingy. <laughs> Yeah, the egg if, the, if you guys are watching um, Dutch Bros management, get some egg thingies, and we'll yeah, uh, get and then maybe you'll have about fifty thousand franchises like Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, but really cool concept. They're only no, they do not have a indoor uh, operation. It's all drive through. And look, let's face it, um, a lot of QSRs are going that route, right? Like a lot of those companies are only doing drive through locations, and Dutch Brothers been doing that for a long time. Um, and so all of their prototypes now are all drive through. So just yeah, like that's this. great. And you, have, and you have to imagine right from like, a, um, you know, lease security perspective, the tenant, if the tenant's going to be profit, you know, the tenants re, uh, re, refurbishing a 975 foot square building to get this going, like they're, they're up their costs to get up and running are, are minimal. Right. So, you know, that just adds, yeah. makes the company more profitable, makes the lease more secure. You know, it makes it better for, for everyone. So, you know, not having that huge indoor dining area. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this this lease in particular. So this is an absolute triple net lease. We don't get a lot of these around here. A lot of times they're double net plus. They say they're net lease, whatever. This one is supposed to be an absolute triple net lease. I haven't read every, you know, line in the document that that would tell me if it is or not, but I'm, I'm going to take it at its word and say it's an absolute triple net lease, which means zero landlord responsibilities. Um, so that's, you know, that's utilities, that's property tax, that's structure, that's roof, that's everything. While they're your tenant, uh, the landlord just collects checks, right? That's an absolute triple net lease. Um, this one, like we said, is less than a thousand square foot building, less than half an acre. It's a tiny little lot, but it is extremely well positioned on a retail corridor in Columbia. Um, they're doing 91,000 in net operating income is what they're going to pay the landlord. And then, so what they're asking 
for that is uh, five cap. So 1.8, so over 1.8 million as an asking price. This lease is 15 years. It's brand new as of December and they've got four or five year options on the end. So, you know, brand new lease, pretty standard net lease terms. Um, if I pop open the acquisition and operating cash flows here, you can see that the rent bumps are 10% every five years, which is, again, it's, it's a, it's a pretty normal, uh, lease structure on these, on these, uh, you know, QSRs, other net lease assets. Um, typically you'll see either 2% a year, 10% every five years, or if they're really, you know, if, the if they really don't want to pay you 1% a year, which is probably, which is the worst. And, and we've talked about that in other videos, but just to, um, basically summarize our discussion, our more in depth discussion from the other video, if it's a, uh, 10% bump every five years in comparison to 2% a year, you should look for about a 25, uh, 25 basis point surplus on the cap rate you're going to pay. Right. So keep that in mind. If this was 2% a year, they're asking a five cap. They could ask a 4.75 cap. It'd be essentially the same, but essentially the same lease. Um, I've put a $2,000, uh, deposit here, uh, sorry, capital reserve here, which is about, you know, a little more than 2% of the lease. 2% of the net operating income. Uh, and that's just, you know, for anything can happen money, even though it's supposed to be an absolute triple net lease and you shouldn't have to pay anything. Um, just to be conservative, we're putting a, a small amount aside. Well, and I think you're doing what the bank will most likely ask you to do, right? Um, the bank's always you know, gonna ask you to do something um like that but four percent back i think is usually what they ask even though it's an absolute triple net lease so um you know you're when you underwrite this you're you're not going to be able to argue much to the seller or the developer um that oh hey even though it's an absolute triple net i've got to i've got to put some cash reserve back i have to take that out of the noi as a result that's not going to work um you know, people try to fight that fight. It's it's just as someone who's usually on the development side, um, it's a really tough argument to be had, right? Especially when it's absolute triple net. Um, however, that is something oftentimes want to see. So I just want to add, just kind of add that. I think we've mentioned that before. Yeah, let me just ask you that. So let's say this this one, for example, is an absolute triple net lease. Um, it'd be very hard to make that argument. Let's say it was double net lease. Let's say you, you did have to pay roof and structure. Um, would you have more luck arguing in that case? Because it's not a really- A little bit. I mean, yeah, the roof and structure, I mean, you're looking at like a roof. It's probably 35 year life, especially if it's in construction. Structure, I mean, you know, if you have a geotechnic report and you, you follow that, geotechnical report you should not have any issues with the structure right so you there's a there's not a lot of flexibility there no if it's an old building and it may need a new roof in 15 years maybe right but um that's that's a hard it's a harder it's a tough conversation to have just simply because the warranties i mean it's warranted for 35 years so yeah okay um so let's move on to disposition cash flows here real quick. So this is 15 year, 15 year lease. We're going to assume disposition is in 15 years and look at two scenarios. Um, one scenario is the tenant renews. The other scenario is they leave and you do an adaptive reuse, right? So in the scenario that the tenant renews, the net, the net income at that time as per the contract is going to be uh, about 121,000 a year. Like I said, those are 10% those are bumps every five years and those continue into the option periods. Um, if you were to exit at that time, you'd expect the cap rate would be higher than what we're going in at simply because it's an older building. It's not a brand new 15 year lease. It's a lease with five year options. Um, so you'd expect that to go up. I'm using five basis points a year increase as my standard. Um, that could be higher, could be lower. We, we really have no idea actually where cap rates will be in 15 years. But just using you know today as a reference and then adding to that um, based on the age of the, the increased age of the building and the worse uh, lease that you'd be facing, you can assume that it, in, in, a, in a similar cap rate environment, the exit cap rate will be higher than the uh, acquisition cap rate. And then the other option uh, would be an adaptive reuse. In this case, the adaptive reuse, you know, on a 975 square foot building, is shouldn't be that expensive. 
However, uh, I'm not extremely confident you'd get the same uh, NOI because maybe you could. Uh, I guess you'd have to think about who's going to go in there. Are they going to have the same NOI as, uh, you know, as this company? It's probably going to be a QS, another QSR, another concept. Um, but if you assume a similar NOI to what, you know, they'd be paying, if you assume uh, some cost for the adaptive reuse, then you come out to pretty much the same uh, net disposition. You shouldn't you shouldn't have too much difference in your net, net disposition. And the reason for that is because your exit cap rate at that point should be a little bit lower than the exit cap rate on a renewal because you'd be getting an exit cap rate based on a new contract rather than a um, contract in your option period. So the only real question there would be, you know, would is the assumption that the NOI will be similar, is that valid? Um, so we'd have to study, you know, we have to study the market of Columbia. We'd have really have to look at who will the other tenants be um, to see if that's a, a valid assumption. What do you think about that, Winston? You think you think the the new tenant would have a similar NOI to the outgoing tenant, or or are we out to lunch? No, I think I think you're pretty accurate, right? Um, yeah, I, I think we're pretty accurate. Um, I don't think the new tenant would have a similar similar one. I mean reality is you're limited on, on the use you're not 175 square feet right it's going to be a drive through something <laughs> you know that's what it's going to be um i think it's 0.44 acres so i mean you could you could probably put something on there other than the drive through but i got a good feeling that that's what it's going to be um your adaptive reuse you know for you know basically ti um i think that's even a little high tyler i, I maybe I guess you're looking at what? What year is this? You're wanting to do disposition? Year 10? 15 years. Okay. So, yeah, I did it at 50 bucks. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's good. You know, something I want to, a lot of times we doing like um, medical or, or, or like educational, which those are, um, those build out costs are just naturally more expensive. You know, they, they are, and you've got such a, you know, like a simple use, you're, you're just taking, uh, like, a, for example, um, fat Mo's and making it into a coffee drive through like Dutch bros. It's not that expensive, right? So I, I just want to, there's a difference between the TI mm -hmm. needed to get it up to par for, um, depending on its use. I don't know if I explained that. Before. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. For sure. Some more I want to talk about on the adaptive reuse. So you can see here I've got $50 a square foot and I've got $90 a square foot here. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, I'm, I'm assuming I'm putting in my initial dollar per square foot in today's terms. I don't know how much adaptive reuse is going to cost 15 years from now. I have to make an assumption on that. And up until now, a lot of these videos, we just kind of guess we say oh, okay 10 years from now it's you know it'll be more expensive how much well, how much more expensive will it be so just to talk about that a little bit um i've got some some charts here if you look at um just in the last six years the cost of maintenance repair of buildings so this this is a this is an index that comes from the bureau of labor and statistics they keep track of a lot of commercial real estate indexes this one is specifically for maintenance repairs of existing buildings um so since january 2017 until today so six years basically um, the cost has gone up 25%, right? And you can see in the beginning that was a lower, uh, smaller slope, and then you had the pandemic and it shot up and whatever, but like a pretty reasonable estimate for how much maintenance and repair buildings are going to go up based on recent history is about 4% a year, right? So if you, you know, if you go up here, I'm just going to assume my formula 4%. If I, if I use the, uh, Bureau of Labor and Statistics index as a, as a reference, I can project out that in today's terms, when my adaptive reuse is going to happen, it's probably going to be compounded at about 4% a year of what I would pay today. Um, you know, that could go up, that could go down. But just as a frame of reference, if you're projecting 10 to 15 years out, you need to know that, you know, that's, you know, maybe you can start with that number um, when you estimate how much you're going to have to pay. And then just quickly to break that out a little bit. I said, you know, it's gone up uh, 25%. Um, depending on the type of adaptive reuse you're going to do, it could be, you know, much greater or much less. Here you can just see how variable these costs are. 
Um, so you have like con concrete contractors have gone up 45%, whereas architects have basically been flat, right? And anything in between. So depending on your adaptive reuse, that 4% number may or may not be valid. That's just a general uh, number that you could keep in mind when you want to project out how much and how much you know square cost per square foot is going to is going to increase in the future. All right, so IRR analysis. Let's let's look at the deal, right? So 5.6% unlevered IRR. Um 1.89 x your money and if you're levered it's negative leverage so winston I'm, you shot me a message earlier today you know underwrite these at with a 7.5 percent loan rate uh money's money's expensive it's really hard to get um positive leverage these days right so yeah this the lever the levered irr is down 4.3 percent so in this scenario if you you know really like this property you wanted to buy it um you'd want to do it with as much money as you can, right? So any any debt you put on this is going to hurt your return. Um, unfortunately, that's the reality for today. These QSRs were trading at even lower cap rates. They're asking a five cap on this one. Um, the comparable for this, so within the last two months, and we can look at comparables um, of, QSR, of QSRs recently, right? So here's the comparables for QSRs. Uh, they're asking a five cap on a 15 year lease. These are QSRs that have sold in the last two months. So you can see some of them down here in the fours. Um, some of them are in the five, six to sevens. This has actually come up a bit last year. You know, this average was down even, even lower. Um, but with these borrowing rates, like everything is, it has to come up. Um, I still think it's very difficult to buy these in this five, five and a half cap range when your when your borrowing costs are significantly higher than that. So, you know, from my perspective, it's tough. If you love this, the QSR uh, or you love Dutch Bros Coffee, um, you can buy it with a lot of cash or you can eat the negative leverage. But, you know, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a tough sell. Um, you can see that at a five cap versus the QSRs, this is reasonably priced. Um, we do have a comparable where a Dutch Bros Coffee, same 15 year lease, same style um, refurbished building was sold in Clarksville in January at a 5.3 cap. So you would probably expect this one to sell in somewhere in that in that same range, 5.3, 5.5 ish. Um, but even if you do that, you're still in the significantly uh, negative leverage and it's still going to be a, a, you know, a deal that, um, you know, it's not going to give you a great return. You gonna buy? Is, is something you're interested in buying, Winston? You know, it's not it's not my flavor of coffee uh, currently, but I do think that if I had the cash, um, and you know, look, I think Colombia is a great market. I think this is a great tenant. Um, I love their concept. I don't think they're going to be in a situation in the future where they need to change their prototype. Um, I think I think there's a person out there that, that will buy this and I think it'll trade kind of in that five three to five five cap is where I think it'll trade and it'll be an all cash purchase that's what will happen on this um there's there's just no way to um you know take out a loan against this um and and you know, eat that there'd be no reason to right um the upside there's no true upside there I don't see cap rates compressing any on these uh, uh, single tenant at least deals like they did in 2020. They started to in 2020, 2021. You know, you just don't have that upside. That's not this this asset class. So if you like, if you like, um, if you like Dutch Bros, I think you can buy it. It's a great market, but um, you don't buy it if, if you if you think uh, it's going to appreciate because it's not going to. That's my opinion. So I'm not a buyer personally, but I do think there are some people out there that, that this will be attractive for. Yeah, no, well said. Um, all cash buyer, 5.5 cap. Like I said, I always say that I, I would love to have a, a commercial real estate gambling website where we could make bets on these. Like I, I take the under over on that, on that five point. I probably go, 
I, I, I'd, I don't know if I'd go 5.5, 5.4. I'd, I'd set the line there and just see where the money comes in. And I don't know. Yeah. Be a fun side, side I think it's good. We've talked, we've talked about that before. We should figure out how to do that. There's got to be a way <laughs> um, where we, we can, we can make some sort of, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's, I think it's going to be, <laughs> it's not going to be a five cap. Look, man, there's, there's a big gap right now between the selling, you know, ask cap rate, right, and what they're going for. Um, if you own property today, it's not worth what it was 12 months ago. It's just not. Uh, it's just not in, in commercial real estate. So uh, with very few exceptions. So, you know, what's hurting people are developers that underwrote this deal six, eight months ago, right? Thinking they were going to get six, eight months ago cap rates. Um, and, you know, it came on the market today, right? And this is a vastly different environment. We have bank, uh, bank failures and whatnot. So big, big, big difference in markets. Um, and there's just going to be some time for for this to kind of catch up for the market to catch up and we've been saying that for several weeks well look what's been going on man you know you've got the fed coming out saying they're not going to raise rates anymore and then you have pretty uh pretty crazy numbers come out on growth or inflation they say oh well you know maybe we'll start raising rates again and then a week later bank a bank fails <laughs> it's chaos out there so no one knows, but it is going to take time for for things to kind of catch up and find that equilibrium again. Yeah. That's my that's my hypothesis. Yeah, I hear you, man. Well said. Um, I guess that's. I don't have anything else on this one. Um, you have anything else to add? Are we good for for Dutch Bros in Colombia? I don't. But we've got Red Lobster um, next week, which is good. I had lunch there uh, today and the access to get in was really tough so i pulled in the middle lane to take a left and i, I just like hardly could get in so i just pulled right back on the right and kept going so i didn't get it none of those biscuits today tyler yeah all right brother hey thanks so much all right cheers man see you next week see you bye